The aspect of life that can blindside us that we're going to look at this time is that of emptiness. And all of us, I think, have deep down within us this God-given desire for soul satisfaction. And because of sin, we, A, are naturally separated from that fulfillment, but then, B, we are blind and often inaccurate in how we go about getting that fulfillment in our lives. And not only do we often go after things that promise fulfillment, um, they often actually leave us emptier than when we started going after them in the first place. There was a man who, as far as we know, was uh, the richest man, or at least he was at the time, the richest and wisest person that was on the face of the earth. And mercifully, this guy was a king in Israel, which means that the account of his life ended up in the Old Testament because he documented those things. And his name was Solomon. And you can read all about how opulent his life really was uh, over in uh, the Old Testament. And this book that he wrote is called Ecclesiastes. It's also found in the Old Testament. And he talks about three things that he pursued uh, just about as far as he knew how to go with all of the resources and opportunity that he had to see if any of these things possessed the fulfillment and the satisfaction that they promised. He pursued pleasure, he pursued achievement, and he pursued riches. So first, he tries to find fulfillment through pleasure. Solomon had the the means and the opportunity to get all the pleasure he could ever hope to pack into one life, and yet he found, in the end, that it was meaningless. Next, he tries to find fulfillment in achievement. He found the more he built, then the emptier his hands got. So last, he goes after riches. This is what I'm going to call the usual formula for joy. And we think that if we can become successful at something, and you get to pick whatever that version of success is, but if we're successful, that will bring us satisfaction. And this satisfaction is going to take the pressure off of our lives. And that lack of pressure will allow us to finally be content. And once we're content, we're going to have the margin and the headspace to be joyful. And if we are as joyful as we can imagine, then we're going to be the life of the party. However, for those of us who follow Jesus, it shouldn't come as too much of a shock that when we find our heart leaning in a particular direction, that God's ways probably lay in a very different direction altogether. But the good news is Jesus invites us to live for something greater. This, This stresses me out because it means that I need to abandon my own self-preservation and abandon myself to God's direction in my life. And if I do that, God says, he's going to take care of me. But then there's that little voice that shows up in, in the middle of our brain that says, what if he doesn't? And the moment that I start to agree with that question... I'm right back into the usual formula for joy that is only going to leave me empty. Jesus is calling you and me to live life a better way. And and here here it is, the upside-down path to a life of joy. Step one, abandon my desires. Step two, pursue God's desires. And step three, God brings fulfillment. He brings joy, satisfaction, contentment, uh, and better desires as we follow him. Jesus urges you and me to build into the kingdom of God instead of the kingdom of me. And if for you, church is nothing more than this event that happens on Sunday morning of some spiritual content download, uh, then you are really missing out on the full benefit of being involved in the lives of other people who believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and are trying to actively make their lives go in his direction. So you can serve the church, or you can build the church by serving. 
Uh, you can employ your abilities, your skills, your gifts to make the mission of the church happen and to bless other people. Uh, you can also give of your money. Uh, ministry just doesn't run on air. Uh, but even beyond that, I think we've talked about this already, that money has this great power around our hearts. And if we can give part of the money that God blesses us with back into the work of his body, the church, then the money has less of a controlling interest in what we do with our life. But then also you can tell your story, telling other people what Jesus is doing in your life encourages other followers of Jesus Christ. That's good. And it might also spark some thirst for living water in the hearts of people who are spiritually seeking this soul satisfaction that God supplies. If you want lasting fulfillment, you need to stay abiding. You need to stay connected to Christ. So how do you do that? Well, let's, here's how this works. First, you spend regular time reading the Bible and apply what you're reading out of the Bible of God's ways into your life. There's also praying. Um, it's not like you're never going to face disappointment or frustration again or that you're not going to have expectations that go unmet. And you can take all of those feelings to God. And here's a promise. Jesus will lead you to a greater life. 